On October 17, 1973, Jeff Greenhaw, the police chief of Falkville, Alabama, received a strange call from a resident. The frantic person reported a UFO craft had descended on a nearby field. Off duty at the time, Chief Greenhaw grabbed his revolver along with a Polaroid camera and headed over to see what was happening. When he arrived, there was no UFO. However, something else was there. Something that changed Captain Greenhaw's life forever. In this episode, we will examine this classic 1973 alien encounter, a case that became to be known as the Alabama Metal Man. Around 10 p.m. on October 17, 1973, Police Chief Jeff Greenhaw was relaxing at home, hoping to have a relaxing evening. Then the phone rang, and his life would change forever. Reports vary as to whether this caller was anonymous, or Greenhaw knew the individual. But on the other end of the phone, someone was frantically telling him a UFO had landed in a nearby field. Chief Greenhawk grabbed his gun, keys, and Polaroid and sped toward the field. On the way there, he radioed the event to the station, but when he arrived, there was no UFO at the scene. He turned off his car and began canvassing the area. While no UFO was spotted, Chief Greenhaw did see something else, something that was truly bizarre. As he was walking around, he saw something just on the side of the road and shouted at it. He approached it to get a better look and could see that this was something like he had never seen before. The being was around six feet tall and appeared to be covered from head to foot in tinfoil. It began approaching the police vehicle. All its movements were extremely jerky and mechanical. The chief would snap four Polaroid pictures of the being. As it got closer, Chief Greenhaw turned on the headlights to the car. This seemed to scare it and the entity took off running. The being was fast, extremely fast. Chief Greenhaw hopped in his vehicle and chased it through the field, but since the field was uneven terrain, he could only get up to 35 miles per hour. Notably though, the being was getting farther and farther away from him. The chief's car eventually fell into a ditch and the being got away. Greenhaw would later recall the being was running faster than any human he had ever seen run. Like many alien encounters and UFO sightings, the event would take a life of its own after it happened. Greenhall would tell his story and it would wreck his life. The town mocked him and lost all respect for the young captain. Several weeks after reporting the incident, the town council would fire Captain Greenhall. Soon, his wife would leave him and to add insult to injury, Greenhaw's house burned down some time after the report. Greenhaw would go into a deep depression and isolate from others. He recalled that he couldn't trust anyone, and many of his friends stabbed him in the back. While Greenhaw's case is surely a fascinating and a strange one, it is quite controversial. Author Charlton Hall would write a book claiming when he was a teenager him and his friends faked several alien encounters in the Alabama area. Among these, Hall alleges he and his friends were responsible for the 1973 Alabama Metal Man. While Hall alleges to have faked the incidents, there are still questions surrounding the event. The most notable question surrounds the speed at which the being moved away. If it's true that the being ran at the speeds even close to what Chief Greenhall alleges, then there's no way that these teenagers could have faked this. Still, much of the event could have been faked. The phone call could have been a prank. A teenager could have wrapped himself in tinfoil and created the alien costume. The mechanical movements as well could have been fabricated. Probably the key piece of evidence in this case are the photos. The photos were examined and have never been proved to be a hoax. Around 10 years after the event, the originals and negatives were stolen, but luckily copies were still around. Like many UFO sightings and alien encounters, the details in this photo are tough to make out and it's really inconclusive. As a result, this case really comes down 
to eyewitness testimony. One of the big hurdles for Jeff Greenhaw has to do with the fact that he was the sole witness. While many believe Greenhaw in its story, it's tough to substantiate stories like this with just one eyewitness. To make matters worse, this case occurred in the early 1970s, a time when reporting a UFO or an alien encounter was definitely met with ridicule. This has led many to speculate there are many, many other undocumented cases out there. It's important to note too, there have been other cases of robotic-like aliens, so these are not really that rare. One case we covered on this channel earlier was one involving the Cisco Grove encounter. The case of the Alabama Metal Man has inspired much appearing in television and books and being a popular southern alien encounter. One final point concerning this case is that Jeff Greenhaw never wavered around what he saw. He regretted reporting it since it caused him so much pain, but he has remained adamant about the events of that night.